Okay, let's get going. In problem 26, I presented and proved the law of total probability, an important result that allows us to compute the probability of an event by conditioning. I'm going to apply it today to this question here. It's about tulips, loads of colors of tulips. As usual with questions, read it through, lay out the notation, draw some pictures, help you understand what's going on. We have a box. It's got two types of bags. Both bags contain 25 tulip bulbs, but the proportion of red and yellow bulbs differ. So let's call bag A the one which has 5 red and 20 yellow, and bag B the one that has 15 red and 10 yellow. Let Y denote the yellow tulip bulb is chosen. The question is, a bag is selected at random and a bulb picked at random from the bag. What's the probability that you get a yellow tulip bulb? In other words, find probability of Y in my notation. Suppose we didn't know about the law of total probability, what might we think? Well, we know the probability of a, like, the definition of probability of an event is like number of ways that that event can happen divided by no number, total number of possible outcomes. So could this be an answer? 20 over 25, why? Because in bag A, I've got a total of 25 bulbs and 20 of them are yellow. So using the definition of probability, 20 over, 20, 20 over 25. Or can I say like for bag B, you've got 10 out of 25, so the answer is 10 out of 25. Well, you know something's wrong because it can't be both, right? The answer can't be both. Um, but if we use a common sense, by the way, this is 0.8, this is 0.4, okay? If we use a common sense, would we expect our answer to be closer to one of these numbers? Have a think. You've got 60%, so you've got more, more of the bags are of type A, and type A, you've got a higher proportion of um, yellows. Than, uh, than in B. Well, I think you can just you didn't need to know that information. You can see that from here because you're more likely to pick a type red, right? Because this is higher than that. You've got more type uh, bag A than Bs. Your your answer should be closer to for pro answer for if you as if you picked the probability of a bag A than B. So in other words, your answer should be closer to 0.8 than that. In any case, we can't use this method because the point is that the probability of picking a yellow depends on which bag you pick. And when you have a structure like that where the probability of an event that you're interested in depends on one or more other events, then this is where law of total probability is useful. So I've written some notes here. Note because the chance of picking yellow depends, that's a crucial word, on the bag chosen. So what we have here is we have uh, going to be dealing with conditional probabilities. Law of total probability says that so the probability of an event we're interested in may be expressed in terms of conditionals times marginals. The word conditional means it depends, right? So here we're depending on the bag type, A or B. Okay, solution. I'm going to draw two pictures. Remember for the law of total probability, you can, for, for simple problems, you can do a tree diagram, a Venn diagram. So we've got four possible things that can go on. You can pick a, a if for either type of bag, you're going to pick a yellow or not a yellow. All right, so that's why it's four combos. This is in my tree diagram. You pick a red or not a red. Are you a, a bag B? Sorry, did I say bag bag A or bag B? And at this node, when we go up here at this branch, it means that we pick a yellow given we've got a bag A, and this is not a yellow given bag A. This one's yellow given bag B, not a yellow given bag B. Then we put in the numbers, probability of numbers, point A. For, 0.6 and 0.4, these add up to 1. Uh, this branch here, we got 20 yellows in that bag A, so it's 20 out of 25. So that's the probability I gave you before, it's actually the conditional probability. Alright, common mistake here, students write, this is probability of Y. Well, no, we're, we're, that, in fact, that's the answer I want, isn't it? We, we want to solve that problem, probability that uh, of Y. No, this is probability of Y given bag A. It's conditional probability. Likewise, this is also conditional probability. You've got 10 yellows in bag B. So it's 10 out of 25, like that. Now, so what law of total probability says is, if I just use the tree diagram, is that I want probability of yellow. Just basically multiply all the branches that contain the event yellow. So that times that is this. The key thing, actually, is that I'm after the joint probability. So this is saying that it is uh, bag A type 
and you've picked a yellow, right? And we wanted that, but we can get that in terms of conditional times the marginal. If you remember this, you might remember this as the form of um, in the formula probability of A given B equals probability of A and B divided by probability of B, supposing probability of B is bigger than zero. So all I've done is I've just rearranged it so I've got the joint. This amounts to multiplying the numbers on the branch to get to the tip there, so that times that. Okay, that's the number. Similarly for B, type bag type B, that times that gives me that. Of course there are two other numbers probabilities, that one and that one, but I'm not interested in those because they don't involve y. These are not y's, you see. Okay, and then what I do to get the probability of y is I just add the probabilities. So that plus that gives me the answer. Right, and that's the answer. So what I've actually done, the law of total probability, by conditioning on, I've got a condition on something, what does the thing I'm looking for, the probability of event y, actually depend on it, depends on the bag type. So that's what I'm conditioning on bag type. Bag type can be A or B. So that's this is what this says. It's basically A and yellow and this is B and yellow. We express in terms of conditionals and marginals. So I get 0.64 and as I said it should be closer to 0.8 than 0.4 and indeed it is. So that looks right. If I made an error let me know. If I get a number that's outside this interval, 0 0.4 or 0 0.8, that's definitely wrong, right? So if I get 0 0.3 or 0 0.9, I know something is something's wrong in the calculation. If I get something closer to 0.4, then there's something dodgy there as well. Guys, it can happen to us because, um, you know, I mean, with um, what do we have here? We've got yellow and red. We've got bag A and B. Well. You know, after a while when we're doing these things we can lose concentration, we can start thinking about other things like blue balls and red balls and things like that, All right, we basically lose track of what we're actually doing. So anyway, that's a way to check your answer. Another way to depict this is via a Venn diagram. So we've got A, B, all right? so we're conditioning on, on the bag type and the bag type forms a partition of the sample space, that's why this and this covers the whole of the sample space. I made A slightly bigger because there's a higher chance of picking bag A than the bag B. This circle here represents, I mean it's all abstract this, this circle here represents uh, picking a yellow and it can be decomposed into two disjoint pieces. This blue piece which is uh, picking a yellow and you picked a uh, bag B and this is um, a, bag A, and you picked a yellow. These two pieces added together give me the probability of probability of yellow. So to emphasize guys, law of total probability important because this is where we have, um, we want to calculate the probability of an event, but that event depends on other things. And this is the nature of um, the world we live in, you know, uh, things are, inter uh, are dependent. One thing depends on some other things. So when we build probability models, we, we uh, have to look at to see whether there's some kind of dependencies. If they're not, then the events are independent, then the calculation is even simpler. We wouldn't need the law of total probability. Okay guys, that's it.